Okay, welcome to Pathophysiology again. Today we will talk about renal disorders. Let's start with the quick anatomy and histology of the kidneys. As we know, there are two kidneys in the human body, one in the right and one in the left. And each kid kidney consists of the medulla part and we have the glomerular part. And we know that about 25% of the cardiac output goes to the kidneys. The major function of the kidneys is the glomerular filtration and for that these kidneys they need the arterial blood that comes from the heart to go through the artery system throughout the whole kidneys and this blood should be at specific volume specific pressure in order for the nephrons to be able to perform its function as we know the, ne the nephrons are the functional unit in the kidneys so when this blood comes from the heart, it goes through the renal system, the vasculation of the, of the kidneys to the nephrons all the way to the capillaries, and that's what the, where the filtration takes place. This filtration, or the rate of filtration, glomerular filtration rate, needs, again, uh, maintained blood volume at a specific pressure. When this pressure is low or when this pressure is high or higher than normal or the range that the nephrons needs, that will affect the glomerular filtration rate. After the filtration takes place, the extra fluids and the waste products will be excreted through the venous system and it will be formed in urine which will leave the kidneys to the ureters and from the ureters to the blood or to urethra outside of the body. Again, you need to remember that the kidneys are highly vasculated and there's a very complex arterial structure inside the kidneys that influence the filtration. Just remember that the pressure and the volume of the blood are important. Whenever this change, the filtration or the glomerular filtration rate will be affected. And then this means that the kidney functions will decline. If we look deeply inside the kidneys, looking at the nephrons being the functional unit in the renal system, it has this very complex system that you learn about in physiology where the blood will go through different loops and different structures in order for the filtration to take place. In terms of physiology, when we talk about physiology, of course, we're talking about the functions. One of the major functions of the kidney is the regulation of extra fluid or extracellular fluids. The kidneys will filter the fluids, keep what's needed, and get rid or excrete what's not needed. This way, the kidneys will maintain the fluid status as normal as needed. Patient will stay hydrated, not over hydrated, no over fluid or over retention of fluids, and not dehydrated. Kidneys will do that based on the osmolality of the blood. The osmolality of the blood must stay within a normal or specific range. When there's too much fluids, the osmolality will go down, which is the concentration. The kidneys will sense this and start removing the extra fluid. 
and vice versa. When the osmolality is high, which means the concentration is high, and if that's as a result of decreased the plasma volume or the water volume in the blood, then the kidneys will decrease the excretion and maintain the fluid. This is very important for the blood circulation, for the blood perfusion, for the blood pressure, for maintenance of perfusion all over the body. And so that also explains the regulation of osmolality. Also, the kidneys responsible for maintaining the ions or the electrolytes concentration in general within normal. Each electrolyte has its own range or normal range. The kidneys will excrete the extra and keep what's needed. For example, if a patient has sodium his serum sodium for whatever reason reached 150 the kidneys will make sure to excrete at least 5 milli equivalent to keep the uh, sodium range at 145 which is within the normal range regulation of pH as well and the status of acidosis and alkalosis and this is done through the excretion of the bicarbonate and bicarbonate ions as we know, this is an alkaline. So whenever there's a status of acidosis, that's what the kidneys will produce. Major, major function is the excretion of waste products and toxins, such as ammonia, urea, and creatinine. These waste products must leave the blood because they have otherwise they will cause a lot of problems the production of hormones and mainly here we're talking about erythropoietin which is needed to stimulate the bone marrow right to produce the RBCs so we need to understand all of these functions in order to understand the symptoms that result from change or declination in these functions. For example, when the kidneys functions are declined, this regulation of fluids will no longer be normal. So the fluid may have the patient may have fluid overload. There will be a change in osmolality. There will be a change in the pH. There will be accumulation of waste products. So anything that the kidneys is doing, when it's in status of a disease, it will not be doing. So what does it take to keep the patho, or the physiology actually? What does it take to keep the functions of the kidneys? There are factors are we call pre-renal, which means before the kidneys. And what's before the kidneys is the blood mainly. So this blood, there must be blood flow, blood perfusion within the normal pressure and normal volume. Any change in the volume or the pressure will decrease the filtration. Also, we have intrarenal structure. This has to have normal structure. There will be, should be no ischemia, so we have to have enough blood. And there should be no toxic materials that can damage the internal structure of the kidneys and post renal we need a patent tract so there should be no obstruction or tumors that can obstruct the flow of the urine this is in general the three changes or fact uh, groups of factors that affect the uh, functions or maintaining the functions of the kidneys let's start with acute kidney injury um, this interchangeably used as acute renal failure although failure is a last stage so injury means there is something wrong that can be reversible and fixed if it's not fixed it will reach to a stage of acute renal failure the acute injury or kidney injury is mainly categorized by a sudden declination in the GFR this is the major and the only way to say that there's a declination in the kidneys the patient may show problems in fluids and electrolytes and osmolality and erythropoietins 
but not necessarily all caused by the kidneys or kidney fi failure because they could also be caused by other things. Only when the GFR is declined that we call it renal failure. Now again a GFR or continuous or having normal GFR depends on all the things that we mentioned before. Normal uh, blood volume, normal blood pressure, normal internal structure of the kidneys and a patent tract. Now when the GFR declines, then all the functions of the kidneys will decline. As a result of this, the patient will not be able to excrete the extra or the unneeded, unwanted materials, whether it's a fluids or it's waste products. So patient will have fluids accumulation and electrolyte imbalance, acid-base imbalance, and as well as also retention of waste products. Now, the causes of this, again, it could be pre-renal, post-renal, and intra-renal. As I said, pre-renal, this could be like in case of heart failure, in case of shock, whether it's hypovolemic, whether it's cardiogenic, whether it's neurogenic, anything, any factors that leads to severely in decrease in renal perfusion. Because if there's no blood to come into the kidneys, there will be no filtration. Intrarenal, anything that, again, it could be either related to ischemia. If this lack of blood that's coming from the heart toward to the kidneys is not fixed, first, the inside internal structure of the kidneys will suffer from ischemia and eventually it may die, become necrotic. Another cause could be as a result of tox toxic materials, such as medication or diet. This also will cause necrosis. So this is what we call intrarenal. And postrenal, again, if I have the kidneys and there's urine formed, this urine has to leave. But if the tract is obstructed, then the urine will accumulate inside the kidneys and the next thing you see is that the kidney will get distended and then again inside the filtration will also stop so the GFR in all cases will be going down so again with pre-renal what we explain if we have a problem in the heart whether the blood pressure is severely low or the blood volume is severely low, the amount of the blood that would reach to the kidneys will also be low. The GFR needs, again, normal blood volume, normal blood pressure in order to continue. And post renal, as we explain, if this is the kidneys, here's the urine, there should be a normal patent tract obstruction will cause the urine to stay inside the kidneys and eventually the kidneys will get distended and will have a problem inside it. Now internally or inside the kidneys as you see in this picture this uh, this is a necrosis okay as a result of toxic materials. Now in, in this case it could be either nephrotoxic means caused by toxic material or ischemic means its necrosis result from lack of blood for a very long period of time so it could be either ischemic this could start cardiac problem that eventually due to prolonged low renal perfusion the cells inside the kidneys died because they're not getting blood for a long period of time or could be toxic as in case of drugs such as this antibiotics called immunoglycoside or some chemical materials such as the contracts dye which used in CT scan. These toxic materials have different, uh, high concentration that some people, not everybody, but some people react differently to it 
and it can damage the internal structure immediately. So this could be, as I said, either ischemic or nephrotoxic. In both cases, the tubular or the tubules inside the kidneys, they will get damaged. This will result in derbis. Derbis, it's basically the little structure um, that results from the destruction. They will accumulate inside the nephrons and this will increase the pressure inside the nephrons. The pressure inside the nephrons, there should be a difference in the pressure, different in the pressure between the blood and the nephrons. This difference in the pressure, it will what will make the fluids in and out. And if these pressures now become uh, equal, then there will be no fluid shifting. So the fluids will stay in the blood and the fluids inside the, the nephrons will stay in the nephrons. This leads to filtration cease, meaning stops. So the filtration will stop. So all the waste material that this is in the blood will stay in the blood. All the extra volume in the blood will stay in the blood. That leads to a declination in the kidney function. As a result of that, creatinine and BUN are just example of waste products will accumulate. Creatinine is the end product of creatine, which is a protein. Okay, creatinine is the best indicator that there's a kidney function declination. BUN is a blood urine nitrogen. Blood urine nitrogen normally is 10 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. It's also result, it's nitrogen, it's all, and urea. They are results from metabolism of a protein. And so, if uh, the extra should be leaving the blood, and if they stay in the blood, whether it's creatine, creatine which is normally from 0 0.6 to 1.2, uh, then uh, the accumulation of these waste products will have serious consequences. They are neurodepressant. They can affect all the cells. They can create a state of acidosis. And again, the patient may, depends on the level, the patient may go in coma. The other thing is the urine formation will also decrease. As a result of this, the fluid will accumulate and that will increase their blood volume. Increase the blood volume will increase the work on the heart, will increase the blood pressure, will cause edema. Also, the, there will be electrolyte imbalance. Kidneys, uh, they filtrate the electrolytes to keep them within normal. In case when the kidneys function are declined, the sodium and calcium will be decreasing while the phosphorus, magnesium and potassium will increase and this can be very serious especially the increase of potassium mainly it has to it can affect the heart also there will be a low production of erythrobiotins a low production of erythrobiotins means that the bone marrow will not be stimulated at a normal rate, this will result in low RBCs, resulting in low hemoglobin. Also, the accumulation of creatinine and BUN can be bad for the platelets, and that's why the platelets number may also decline. If we do urine analysis for these patients, also we will see that the urine osmolality will be high. Now, osmolality means the uh, concentration. The osmolality of the urine will be high because the urine will be concentrated at a very small amount. While the sodium will be high because the kidneys is not keeping it. And that's why the sodium is low in the blood, high in the urine. Because the kidneys is losing it. And so the patient will be in a state of hyponatremia in the blood. And hypernatremia in the urine. Patient goes through phases. The first phase will be what we call the onset. In this case, there is an injury, but the GFR is still within normal. The uh, GFR normally is 125 or 125 milliliters per minute. This is the speed of a blood circulation as it goes inside the nephrons. In the case uh, at the onset, this will start to decline, but it could be stay above 100. So the functions are still maintained and there maybe there's no many symptoms. 
and that's why there will be no necrosis. Now, this, at this stage, it can be reversible. If we do something, we can reverse it. But if not, then the patient will move to another stage, which is oliguric or anuric. Oliguric means that the urine output is less than 30 milliliters per hour, which is the normal. And anuric means there is zero urine output. This will be as a result of necrosis. Then the GFR will severely go below the normal. So it will be low 80 or 60 from the 125. So the kidney function will severely be. In this case, as a result of necrosis, the derpes will accumulate, as we mentioned before, in the nephrons. And so all the fluids inside the nephrons will accumulate and accumulate. And so the kidney gets distended. Now, Sometimes with the treatment and sometimes self-limited or self-treatment, uh, the therapist will move and will be excreted. You can see it in the urine. As a result of that, the patient will move to the third stage, which is a diuretic. Diuretic means there's a lot of urine. Here's the GFR start to go back to normal, and the urine output will increase. will be maybe 200 or 300 or more milliliters per hour. But what, what really is leaving the body here is water only, which is the water that was accumulated when there was necrosis. So still, the waste products and electrolyte, they're, they're still in imbalance. With the treatment, eventually the patient may move to the recovery stage, and that's when the normal function goes back to normal. Some patient may never go, I mean, the patient may have, doesn't have to go through all this, and not everybody will go and recover. Some patient will leave become chronic, having chronic renal failure and they never recover. Now we'll talk about two syndromes that can uh, affect the kidneys, the internal structure. We have a nephrotic syndrome and we have a nephritic syndrome. The nephritic lets the eye remind you it's as a result of inflammation. A nephrot and, a, and a nephrotic it's affecting the, oh, let's remind you of the protein, the severe lose of a protein. We'll talk about each one of them. So, the nephritic, again, it results from inflammation. This inflammation comes because of secondary infection or primary infection within the kidneys. This inflammation and the attack of white blood cells and this whole immune process, immune reaction, will lead to damage of the glomerular capillaries. The damage of capillaries, of course, will lead to uh, bleeding. And these capillaries, when they die, then that gradients or difference in the pressure will also no longer exist. And so as a result of that, the filtration will stop and the reabsorption will stop. So basically, this is damage of the filtration system. The, in the nephritic syndrome, they, what happened, some factors, what they do, they increase the glomerular permeability. Now, permeability, we know it means how much is or, or how large the pores in the blood vessels will be. Now, in the normal state, the blood vessels and capillaries inside the kidneys will not allow large molecules like a glucose or proteins to pass through them so but if the permeability increased and now the blood pores are increased then these molecules will manage to leave the blood and go out through the urine in the urine they should be only water urea ammonia creatinine sodium potassium fluid so the very very small molecules that are allowed to leave but molecules like glucose or protein, they should never leave the blood. Otherwise, we'd be in a state of low protein. When the protein is severely low, there are very serious consequences for that. So let's start with nephritic syndrome. This, again, it's result from inflammation. So any situation that can cause severe or systematic infection can lead to that. Abdominal abscesses, because they're closed to the kidneys, hepatitis, close to the kidneys, infective endocarditis, and mono, these two can cause systematic or systemic 
uh, infection or inflammation that affects the whole body. And so when there are these inflammation or chemical mediators that cause inflammation gets in the blood and reach the kidneys, they will change, they will cause inflammation and that inflammation will attack the small capillaries that's responsible for the filtration and therefore they will get damaged so they break down and they bleed and they will stop doing the filtration. And so, one of these etiologies result in the white blood cells infiltrate in the mold glomer filtration. This first will inflame and then it will destroy the glomer capillaries there, the lumens, which are the small capillaries. As a result of that, the capillaries will be damaged, filtration will stop, and all the kidney function will decline. So first, this patient will have low GFR because the capillaries are being destroyed. There will be fluid overload and the patient will show edema. And when the fluid overload uh, increase the blood volume, that will lead to hypertension. Patient will have hematuria. Hematuria means RBCs or blood in the urine. And as a result of the low reabsorption, the patient will have oliguria. In case of nephrotic syndrome, these are common factors that can change the permeability. Again, this is a normal blood vessel. Okay? And these are the pores, the size of the pores inside the blood vessels. So when I have a molecule this large as a protein, it will not pass. When the permeability change and the pores become very large, then these protein molecules Will be able will be able to pass, and then the body will lose the its protein. So any of these etiologies will change again. This is the key word, the mere permeability. As a result of that, large molecules, mainly here's the protein, will pass through the urine. This will cause a status of massive a protein urea, means that there is a protein in the urine, and leave the body in a status of hypoalbuminemia, low concentration or low amount of protein inside the blood. Now, as we know, this will result in serious edema because now the encotic pressure will be low. We know that the protein inside the blood is one of the major factors that will keep the fluids in the blood from shifting to the interstitial. Now when this protein is gone, the oncotic pressure will be low and that result in all the fluids, or a lot of fluids from the blood will seep and go in the interstitial causing the edema. This will be massive edema. Also the proteins are used to make the clotting factors. So when there's no protein, no enough protein to make clotting factors, this patient may have a coagulopathy, means that their tendency to bleed will be high. The last one I'll talk about is hydronephrosis. Hydro means water and nephrosis inflammation. In. Now here's a normal thing. Here some urine is being formed and it will just leave the kidneys through the ureters outside the body. For some reason here there's an obstruction in maybe in the ureters, could be in the bladder, could be in the urethra. So the urine is being formed here, but it is not going through. And then it will continue to accumulate and accumulate, and the more it accumulates, the worse the situation. So what you will see here is a distension of the kidneys, which will cause flank, severe can be pain. And also, this urine, when it stays inside the kidneys, it will be toxic. And so it may eventually cause or affect the GFR and stop the GFR and leads to renal failure. So let's see what exactly happened. So there is an obstruction again. So this is a post-renal problem. There's an obstruction and as a result of that the urine is not uh, Going. So this is not a problem in the blood volume, this is not a problem inside the kidneys. The problem here that the urine is not 
going through. That leads to accumulation of the urine inside the nephrons, which increase the pressure. That increase of the pressure will make the pressure inside the nephrons equal or even higher than the pressure in the capillaries. We say that this difference in the pressure between the capillaries and the nephrons is extremely important for the GFR. So when, the, when they are equal, then the GFR will stop. That would lead to marked change in the GFR. Again, the pressure inside the nephrons should always be lower than the pressure in the capillaries. When they are equal or when the pressure in the nephrons is even higher, there will be no filtration. So this leads to a declination in GFR and then distension in the kidneys. The distension in the kidneys will lead to this flank pain and declination of GFR will lead to a low GFR that result in a, a low urine output.